Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. So now that we're done with the basics of binomial in the sense that we know how to expand uh, any uh, question that's related to binomial, now we're gonna bring our attention towards the more important concepts, not that the ones we did were any less important, but these are the concepts that you will most likely find in past papers. And they revolve around basically finding the coefficient of x. Okay, now how does that work? Let me tell you. So basically a binomial theorem could be of three types, okay? One could be that you have x in the first term, okay? One could be that you have x in the second term, and there's a third possibility, and that is you could have x in both the terms. So what'll happen is the, in, in the exam, in the test, you will have a, a binomial theorem, okay? And you will be asked to find just a particular coefficient of x, okay? And x could, it could be coefficient of x squared, coefficient of x cubed, x bar five, okay? Just like the one I have over here. So let's look at this example and then I'll tell you how to go about it. So it says over here, find the coefficient of x squared and x bar five in the expansion of x minus two to the power five. Now, assuming that so far regarding binomial, you only know what I've taught, okay? Then you may be thinking, okay, so how about I expand this, okay? And then we look for the coefficient of x squared and then the coefficient of x bar five and we write the answer. Now, that's absolutely all right. You will get the right answer, but that's not exactly a very efficient way of doing this, okay? There is a more efficient way, but first we're gonna do it the longer way, okay? So first we'll expand. And if, you, if you've been following, uh, if you've been watching the past couple of videos, you must have heard me say that I want you to uh, basically look for a pattern between the value of r, okay, in our expansion and the power that we have on x. Consequently, the power that uh, ends up on x, okay? So if, you, if you've if you been able to identify a pattern, that's great. If you haven't been able to do that, that's fine. I got you covered. We're gonna do just that in this video. Okay, so if I wanna expand this, we know that there are gonna be a total of six terms, okay? Because the power is five, so number of terms is always one greater than the power that you have. So we start by r equals to zero, which means five c zero x to the power five minus zero, which is zero and minus two to the power of zero. And then we have r is equals to one, which means five c one, x to the power of four, minus two to the power of one, okay? And then I'll, and then we'll figure this out, what these, uh, what, what this expansion results into. Okay, and we'll write down the answer. Five c two, x power three, minus two to the power two, and then r equals to three, which means five c three, x to the power two, and minus two to the power three. And then we have r equals to four, which means five c four, x to the power five minus four, which is one, and minus two to the power of four. And then finally, we have r is equals to five, which means five c five, x raised to the power of zero, and minus two raised to the power of five. Okay, now let's write down these terms one by one, and then I'll tell you what's what. So five C zero is one, so is two to the power zero, which means the first X bar five, however, will be X bar five. So that means that's what the first term is. Now for the next term where R is one, five C one is five into minus two. So that's minus 10, but the power on X is four. Okay. And then we have five C two. Uh, so five C two, I believe is 10. Okay, don't worry that how I'm freaking, how, how I know this. Okay, this is something I'll teach you in the coming videos into minus two squared, which means into four. So that's 40 X cubed. Okay, then we have five C three, which is also 10 into minus two cubed, which means into minus eight. So that's minus 80 X squared. And then we have five C four into two to the power four, which means into 16, which means 80 X. And then five C five, which is one X bar zero is also one minus two to the power five means negative 32. Okay, now here's what I want you to observe. Notice when R is equals to zero, the power on X turned out to be five. When R was equal to one, the power on X turned out to be four. When r is equals to two, the power on x turned out to be three. And when r is equals to three, the power on x turned out to be two. And when it was four, it turned out to be one. And when it was five, it turned out to be zero, okay? Now I'm gonna make a statement and I want you to tell me, okay? I mean, you can't do that literally, but I want you to sort of question the statement in your head and tell me if it makes sense, okay? So if I say that r plus the power on x is equals to n, okay? Does that make sense to you? Let's see. So r is zero, okay? And what's the power on x? It's five. What is that equal to? That's equal to five. When r equals to one plus the power on x, so that's four. 
what is that equal to? That's equal to five. And same applies here, two plus three equals to five. And that's actually true because the value that you have on X over here is basically N minus R, okay? Right over here, it's N minus R. And uh, again, let's try it over here when R equals to three. So three plus two equals to five, okay? So as far as this question is concerned, we have enough information to actually answer this question, okay? So let's do that and then I'll come back to this statement. And in the meantime, you can do some thinking along these lines also. So as far as the coefficient of x squared is concerned, we know that the answer to that is minus 80, okay? Now, although it's minus 80 x squared, but since the question is asking for just the coefficient of x squared, minus 80 will do the job. And as far as the coefficient of x bar five is concerned, that is going to be just one, okay? Now, what if, now think, of, think about this. What if the power here was actually, let's say, 11 or 12 or 15 for that matter, okay? And you were asked to find the coefficient of, let's say, x bar 13. So, would, in that case, would you have really expanded the entire uh, expansion and worked out the and picked the coefficient of whatever it is that you were find, asked to find the coefficient of? I hope not. Okay. So that means there's got to be an easier way, a smarter and a more efficient way. So there is. Why? Because if somehow you're able to pick the value of R that you're supposed to plug in the function that will give you the required coefficient, then that should do the job, right? Okay, so what's that formula or what's that technique that can help us find the value of R? So using this statement that I've written over here, if I make R the subject, so can I rewrite this as R equals to N minus the power on X or the power of X, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, let's call it power of X, okay? So through this formula, what I can do is I can basically find out the value of R, okay? Now I'm gonna write this formula nicely, okay? And I'm gonna make a note of it. I want you to refer to that note over and over again when you're doing questions for the first time. Okay, and then you'll this will become like a muscle memory sort of thing. So here's a note, and the note is when X is in the first term, which it is in this case, okay, comma, the value of R equals N minus the required power of X. And that's true because for example, if you apply that over here, the required power of X is two and N we can see is five. So if I had, instead of doing all this, just done five, which is N minus the required power of X, which is two. So N minus two would have mean R equals to three. And I would have straight away used the value of r equals to three and found out the coefficient of x squared. And the same could have been applied to the when we were finding the coefficient of x bar five. Now let's use this method and actually apply it in this example and see it in action, okay? So here you can see the value of n is actually equal to 10. Okay, so let's write that down. And we want the coefficient of the same powers on x, okay? The x squared and x bar five. Okay, so if I want the coefficient of x squared, so that means all I need to do is R equals to N, which is 10 minus the required power of X, which is two. So that means R is equals to eight. And then if I want the coefficient of X bar five, all I need to do is 10 minus five, which means R is equals to what? R is equals to five, okay? So we're gonna plug this in and see how it works. So 10 C eight, 3x to the power 10 minus 8, which is equal to 2. And then you can sort of see that once you expand this, once you figure it out, you will basically end up with x squared and minus 1 to the power of 8. All right, so let's work this out. I'm just going to drag this to the side so that I have some room. So using a calculator, of course, 10 C8 into 3x squared. So 3 squared is 9. So that means this is equal to 405 x squared. But since we just want the coefficient, so our final answer is going to be just 405. And this is for the coefficient of x squared. Now, if I want the coefficient of x bar five, we just saw the value of R that we're going to use is basically five. So that means 10 C five into three X to the power 10 minus five. All right, so I'll just write five over here and minus one to the power of five. Okay, so let's see what happens. 10 C five, let's work it out using a calculator, of course. 10 C5 is equal to 252 into three to the power five. Okay, so this is 61,236 X to the power of five. But as I said earlier, that since we want just the coefficient, so the answer is gonna be 61,236 only. And there you go, fellas, that is the final answer. Okay, now I hope you've understood this concept. Remember, long story short, 
if x is in the first term, the value of r can be determined by simply using this formula right here, which is n minus the required power of x. So if you want the coefficient of x squared, just simply do 5, which is n in this case, minus 2, and you'll have the value of r, which you can then plug in to find out whatever it is that you have to find. Okay, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we will see what happens if x is in the second term. So I'll see you guys then. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.